Hello people, thanks for coming to the channel. Um, in recent years, there has been um, a term that is used. And this term is uh, generally used as a pejorative. Uh, the term is Karen. Okay, so uh, this kind of corresponds, I think, with some other terminology that's developed with the culture wars. Um, I don't know what the exact origins of this are. I mean, I don't know if it was, maybe there was a public figure by the name of Karim, and she kind of, her personality led to the stereotype or what? Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head any famous Karens. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. I mean, it's a fairly common name, but I can't think off the, uh, off the top of my head any famous Karens. Anyway, um... Broadly speaking, what is this? I think it's useful to look at that before I get into why, in my opinion, this is not necessarily the best approach of of labelling people in this way. And I just ask you to watch the whole video before judging. Um, so, a Karen is generally depicted as uh, middle-aged uh, because, broadly speaking, this idea of a Karen is a woman in her let's say, between mid-30s to mid-50s, okay? So lower middle age, like, uh, or youngish, but not... It doesn't generally refer to very young women because there's other pejoratives there, uh, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, so middle-aged woman um, who is white, uh, this is a big factor in it, and usually middle-class or upper-middle-class, uh, well-off anyway, that is a perception. Um, and basically, this sort of woman will be um, very entitled, very loud, very demanding. And the typical situation might be that she goes into a cafe and she doesn't get something exactly as she wants and she'll demand to see the manager. Uh, and she'll be very bossy and, you know, vocal and unpleasant. Um, now, more often than not, unfortunately, there's a racial overtone to this. Because another idea of the Karen is a, a figure who is overly dramatic and a bit paranoid and uh, has racial prejudice. So, for example, um, a black guy might be going for a jog around his, his block and uh, the Karen type figure will come out and get all agitated and um, frustrated and say that she doesn't recognise him and threaten to call the police. Um, I'm using that as an example because... This actually happened in New York City, uh, not not in front of a house, but it was, uh, I think it was in Central Park. A woman um, threatened to call the police on a black guy who was simply jogging. Um, so I have no doubt that that sort of mindset exists, incidentally, if you can see some smoke, it's incense and burning. I have no doubt that that sort of mindset exists. Um, I've seen the videos, I've seen these sort of very obnoxious, entitled women. I don't know, by the way, if there's a male equivalent because I'm sure there's entitled obnoxious men out there as well. So I don't know if there's a sort of male equivalent of that term. But it's fair to say it's used as a pejorative. Now, um, I think this is problematic. I don't think that um, it's a case of saying there isn't a problem with these sort of people, because there is. But for one thing, um, why Karen? I mean, why not a Sally or a... Jessica or uh, Megan, you know, why, why Karen? Why that particular name? I think it's a little bit insulting to women who have the name of Karen. And they may be nothing like that. They may be, uh, you know, soft-spoken, kind. Um, not that I'm speaking on their behalf. They can choose whether they, they take issue with it or not. But I do recall that there was uh, the police brutality incident in Colorado Springs. Now, the, you may recall that incident where a 72-year-old woman with dementia was suspected of shoplifting, um, but she had dementia, she was clearly confused, and the officer, the thug in uniform, who arrested her, took pleasure for breaking her arm. And then uh, his equally disgraceful colleagues were laughing at about it back in the station. Now, her name just happened to be Karen, right? So, that's... Just kind of giving an example of someone who doesn't fit that necessary that sort of demographic. This is a woman who presumably um, 
well, I don't know, you know, she wasn't exactly upper class. Um, she's a victim of police brutality. Uh, there's a political dimension to this as well. Often parents will be right wing Republican voters or Trump supporters. Um, not always, but that I think is another part of the stereotype. Again, you know, in a country of 330 million, I'm talking about the United States because it is a largely American concept. I don't think it is used in Canada or the UK or Australia. Although I am starting to see like a lot of American neologism, neologism, uh, neologisms, can't really say that word. Um, like a lot of new words in the English language it is starting to kind of drift over to this side of the Atlantic. Uh, and I don't think it should. Um, I think by all means, these sort of women should be called out for their bigotry and their obnoxious behavior. But sort of attaching this this kind of name to them. Um, I saw a video that directly relates to this because it caught my attention because the title of the video was uh, about an Asian Karen. So in other words, there's a perception that these women tend to be white. Well, on this occasion, it was an Asian American woman who was behaving as the Karen. Now, I don't really want to share the video. Uh, you know, check out Asian Karen. It was in California. I don't want to share it because I feel that very often these sort of things um, just they 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 take a situation out of context, or at least they take a situation with part of uh, the dynamic without showing the whole picture. So basically, in this video, it's from um, somewhere in California. I can't remember where, but it was presumably a decent affluent neighborhood, and some. Uh, older Asian American people were talking to a driver. Uh, apparently, some kids had been playing, some teenagers had been playing this game of ding ding dong, or I, f I can't remember what it's called in the US. Basically, you ring a doorbell and you run off. Now, some would say it's harmless fun, it's just a prank, but the family were saying that, you know, it was causing, it was frightening their children, and it actually caused one member of the family to be hospitalized. So, to me, you know, if that's persistent, it's antisocial behaviour and that can affect people's mental health. It can really affect people's quality of life. So I don't see it as a harmless prank when it's persistent. Anyway, this guy, in my opinion, was sort of sticking his nose into it. Uh, I guess I'd better just send the video so you can see the context. But anyway, he was sticking his nose into it. And, and as far as I'm concerned, he's kind of making himself out to be all innocent. I'm not so sure it's that clear cut. Anyway, he was talking to these people because he wanted to see if the kids were okay. Anyway, this uh, younger woman comes up, Asian-American woman, and she's very angry. And she accuses this guy of getting involved, and she calls him a gangster, and she uses the N-word. Now, that's wrong, uh, especially knowing how, you know, inflammatory that word is. She shouldn't have done that. But um, only in America could a word be seen as a bigger issue and than anti-social behavior, you know, it's it's something about the United States, particularly if it's a, a racial word, uh, people seem to care a lot more about that than actual behavior, right? So anyway, the bit that got me was they had this back and forth argument. She said he was trying to be a N-word gangster. He was denying that. Uh, but then he said, what's your address? Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you are, there's only one reason to ask for someone's address. That you want to harass them at their own home. Why, why does he need to know her address? Um, that was suspicious to me. She did take his license plate and she was on the phone to the police and so on. So she was probably overreacting. I, I personally think they were both partly at fault. I think he was sticking his nose into something that didn't really have anything to do with him. Uh, I'm filming her. Uh, why? You know, I'm also really suspicious about people who start filming. Um, because I think they're trying to get their little support base on side. I'm not saying it's always wrong. There might be circumstances if someone's a victim of crime and they're filming in order to provide evidence. But I think that the internet is absolutely inundated with these videos of someone doing something and then everyone rushes in to condemn them and there might be more to it. So, for example, in this case, how do we know that the woman involved, uh, she hadn't been tormented for weeks on end by these kids? How do we know that? We don't. I'm not condoning her use of the M word, but we don't know that. And that kind of brings me to a point here. 
Some of these Karens are absolutely obnoxious people. They're entitled, they're racist, they're unpleasant, obnoxious people who should be called out. But I'm a little bit concerned that we're sometimes overusing this term. Well, say we, I don't use it. But sometimes, you know, it, it, if it, it could simply be a woman holding her ground. Now, what if, for example, as a consumer, she really has been um, treated unfairly and she's simply standing up for herself? Does that make her a Karen? You know, um, if someone asks to speak to the manager, does that automatically make them entitled? Maybe they have had rude service. Maybe they have, you know, maybe they're a paying customer and they have had rude service. So speaking to the manager in that sort of situation, I think it's reasonable. Uh, like, look, I've paid for this and your staff member has been totally rude to me. I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think we're sort of getting in a situation where it's it's kind of prejudicing white women because it's suggesting that if they stand up for themselves, they're a Karen in some cases. Other cases, yeah, they deserve all the criticism they get, but I just think that it's one of these terms that get thrown around, like white privilege, like mansplaining. Um, it just it needs to maybe be dropped and individual situations should be assessed. So if a woman is being obnoxious, criticise her. But let's not apply this sort of like she's a Karen without necessarily knowing the full context. That's what I would say. People are free to disagree, but um, for me, the problem is it doesn't always look at the whole context. You know, you start seeing something being filmed, you don't know what's happened beforehand. You don't know what the whole story is. And I find it troubling that a lot of people jump in and just assume they know what it's about, and maybe they don't. And I also think it's being thrown around a lot. Now Karen is just being thrown at women in general as an insult. Um, so there's a sexist angle to it in that sense. The Manu thoughts.